Over the past two days, the news shocked everyone. Peter Dorsey, deputy editor of one of the top British medical journals, issued an article. It says the efficacy rate of the Pfizer vaccine is only 29%. That's totally different from the data released by the company previously, which was 90%. Is there a mistake of the data? 29 or 90? Which figure is more trustworthy? In addition, in South America, Brazil has recently released the results of the phase third clinical trial of the Chinese Sinovac vaccine. The general efficacy is 50.4%. However, for the same vaccine from the same institute, the Butata Institute said a few months ago that the efficacy rate of this vaccine was 91%. Both Sinovac and Pfizer are currently the most widely accepted vaccines in the world. But there exists too much uncertainty of their efficacy rate. So in today's episode, let's find out which data is true and whether we should get the vaccination. By the way, if you are not familiar with the difference between the mRNA vaccine and the inactivated vaccine, and also how to make a choice between these two. You can watch my last episode. First of all, WHO stipulates that the efficacy rate of the coronavirus vaccine must be at least 50%. According to the organization's report in last November, Three out of the 48 vaccines developed worldwide got the approval to enter the phase third clinical trial. They are Sinopharm, Concino, and Oxford vaccines. But most of the attention has focused on the vaccine, which is not in the least. It's the Pfizer vaccine, the first coronavirus vaccine developed in the world. And to now, a total of 43,583 people worldwide have been inoculated. Pfizer company says the efficacy rate of this vaccine is 95%. If you have no concept of this data, let's look back into the history and make a comparison. The efficacy rate of the measles vaccine is between 90 to 93% and the flu vaccine only 40 to 60%. Pfizer vaccine's 95% efficacy rate seems to be an astronomical figure, isn't it? However, after Sleepy Joe has got vaccinated, different voices appeared. Peter Dorshi, associate editor of the British Medical Journal, posed questions about the results of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine trials on January 4th. He wrote that in Pfizer's experiment, data from all 3,000 suspected cases were excluded with 20 times more suspected than confirmed cases. This category of disease can be ignored simply because there was no positive PCR test result. He speculated that the real efficacy rate of the Pfizer vaccine is between 19% to 29%. In fact, no matter where the data was from, the Pfizer company or Professor Dorsey, there are some things unreasonable. Well, the unreasonable part of the data from the Pfizer company is that they used 3,410 pieces of data only for a satisfactory result. Professor Doshi considered these same 3,000 people were confirmed cases and the data from Pfizer was incorrect. Many YouTubers have done some research on Professor Doshi's algorithm and how data from Pfizer was collected. I don't have professional medical background so I can't make too much analysis from the aspect of medicine, but I will try to dig some little known information as a journalist. First of all, Professor Dorshi didn't publish this article on the top medical journal but in the BMI opinion platform. So this is more of a podcast than an academic paper. So it couldn't represent the BMJ standpoint. If you read other articles from the BMJ opinion, you will find that Peter himself is not against vaccines but opposes to the lack of transparency in the disclosure of information during the drug development. But the issue is actually very common and serious in the biomedical industry. 
Peter usually focused on some unpublished data from drug companies and appealed for re-evaluating of the efficacy and safety of drugs from this background. There are some other reports saying after the IPO of the Pfizer vaccine, some high-ranking company administrators have begun selling off their stock, which further increased people's doubts about the validity of the data. So, Peter's reasonable motivation is to try to promote the openness and transparency of the data by questioning the accuracy of the data. Although the Pfizer company gave us an uplifting figure of 95%, we don't need it. What we really need more is the data from the excluded 3,410 testers. What we need is the real data, but the Pfizer company didn't give them to us. Back to the Made in China vaccine, Brazil actually released two groups of data on the efficacy rate of the vaccine. The first one was 78% and the second was 50%. The difference is that the first data, 78% includes patients with mild, moderate, and severe symptoms of the disease. The 50% efficacy rate covered all the above and one more group of patients, the asymptomatic cases. Besides, the two rounds of trials conducted in Brazil didn't tell us the difference in the number of people who go to the placebo and vaccine. So either Pfizer or Sinovac faces the same problem, data deficiencies. Only by releasing all the original data can people's doubts be dispelled. But from the current released data, the efficacy rate of the Sinovac vaccine is already over 50%, barely meeting the WHO standard for marketing. So this time, I would like to recommend the Made in China vaccine. I'm Kathy Chen, that's all for today's video. If you like it, just subscribe and leave your comment. Bye!